Ah, there you are. And here we go. It's time for the Pipewriter Show. Welcome back, everyone. We are smoking a Savinelli Dolomiti 311KS, rusticated. And in it, we have some Cornell and Deal Autumn Evening. An always sweet and satisfying aromatic no matter what the time of year especially when paired with your favorite apple cider it's a whole other experience highly recommend it so in this episode I wanted to discuss a show that I'm guessing is a fan favorite of many members of the YTPC, American Pickers. If you've never heard of the show or seen it, you should definitely check it out. It follows two lifelong friends named Mike and Frank who travel all around the country. And in their travels, they're searching for all sorts of antiques, collectibles, vehicles, really any and all rare items of yesteryear that they can turn around and sell as part of their business, which is appropriately called antique archaeology. The people that they encounter often have these really extensive collections, and the show does a really, really great job of imparting the history of the items, the era that they were from, and all other relevant details. And very often, the characters that they encounter along the way are even more unique than the items that they find. One of my favorite episodes of the show is titled The Einstein Gamble. And in this episode, Frank and Mike visit a land preserve in upstate New York that's overseen by an older gentleman named John Atwater Bradley. And this guy is as interesting as his name sounds. He's one of these older gentlemen that just lived a very rich and interesting life, meeting folks from the worlds of show business, politics, and everywhere in between. And his collection is as eclectic as it is impressive. He also went to Yale, and you can just tell by the way that this guy talks. He's a scholar and absolutely positively brilliant. One of these old guys you could light up a pipe with and listen to him talk just for hours and hours on end. So one of the items they encounter in this gentleman's rather extensive collection is this same make and model typewriter that you see here. It's a Corona 3 from the early 1900s. And this is a rather unique typewriter in its own right. Essentially, it was the first ever laptop typewriter, which was a, a favorite of journalist Ernie Pyle and other war correspondents because of its really compact and folding design, as you can see here. Isn't that cool? Anyway, it turns out that this gentleman's typewriter is much more interesting than that because when he was a student at Yale, he once loaned it to none other than Albert Einstein. Now, I'm not going to spoil the episode because you really should check it out, but suffice to say, it was a very interesting story as to how he came about lending his typewriter to arguably one of the most intelligent pipe smokers to ever walk the planet. And this episode is just one of many reasons I'm a huge fan of the show because I myself am a bit of a collector not only of pipes and typewriters but other tidbits from yesteryear as well like these Laurel and Hardy mugs here which are kinda cool and I'm wondering if this is a tie that binds many of us in this community together because in addition to our shared enjoyment of a relaxing smoke and tasty tobacco, I feel like pipe smoking is a bit of a wormhole to a 
simpler time in much the same way that antiquing and collecting are. There's an appreciation of the past that I think many of us share and a desire to surround ourselves with those items and engage in those pastimes that remind us that life just doesn't need to be so complicated. And very often it's the simple things and memories of simpler times that give us all a sense of profound contentment. Anyway, I'm curious to hear if folks agree about this collection connection and if it's indeed a tie that binds many of us together. I know I'm always stopping in antique shops looking for pipes, ashtrays, and old pipe smoking items in my travels. That's how I found these great tins here. You can see I have a big can of velvet, sadly empty, and the other one is uh, an old tin that was once home to some Edward G. Robinson blend, which is actually still made today. Anyway, these are just a couple items from my collection, and I'm wondering what you all might have in yours. So there you have it, a hypothesis on the possible connections between pipers and pickers. So until next time, remember to smoke slow, type fast, and live every moment like it may be your last. So long, everyone.